April 16th. Is this on? The April 16th, 2019 meeting of the City Council of the City of Springfield, Illinois is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, if you please call the roll. Will do. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Senor. Here. Alderwoman Turner. She should be on the phone. She is. Alderwoman Turner. I'm here. Thank you. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. Alderman Proctor. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderman Tylen. Here. Alderman Donnelly. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Langfelder. Here. Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. Uh, we do have a proclamation to present to the Ford Quartet of the Land of Lincoln Corps, so I'd ask uh, Dan Hurst and Tom Smith, Roger Fairchild, and John Rigg to come forward, please. And I believe uh, Alderman Senor requested this, so if you want to join us, feel free to, or whoever else would like to. And uh, appreciate you being here. As uh, a lot of you know, uh, music is near and dear to the Langfelder family, uh, due to our parents and actually uh, my mom's family. But the proclamation reads, whereas on April 11th, 1938, the barbershop Harmony, Harmony Society was organized in Tulsa, Oklahoma by Rupert Hall, and Owen Clifton Cash, and today there are approximately 22,000 members across North America and affiliated men's and women's organizations in more than a dozen countries, and whereas the Barbershop Harmony Society is an organization comprised of singers committed to advancing the musical art form of Barbershop Harmony through education and performances, the Society's mission has stayed true to its original goals of entertaining and educating thousands of people everywhere through more than 1,000 chapters and 1,200 registered quartets. And whereas the Forget Quartet of the Land of Lincoln Chorus was organized in 1956, or I guess it was the Land of Lincoln Chorus was organized in 1956 and is comprised of a chorus and chapter quartets that meet every Tuesday at seven o'clock at the Hoagland Center for the Arts. And whereas barbershop music has been part of the country's musical heritage that celebrates family, friends, and the values that unite us. And whereas with this understanding, the Land of Lincoln Chorus has entertained our community year after year at various events and activities, including First Night Springfield, the recognition of our armed forces and veterans, and even spread holiday cheer through its Singing Valentine's program. And whereas April 11th is celebrated as National Barbershop Quartet Day, we felt it only fitting to recognize the gentlemen of the Land of Lincoln Chorus who continue to bring smiles to our residents' faces through the gift of music. And whereas over the past six decades, members of the Land of Lincoln Chorus have never stayed strayed from its focus of entertaining residents of all ages, including former Alderman Bruce Strom, we are thankful for your selfless gift of time in order to share your talents with Springfield. Now, therefore, I, James O. Langfelder, Mayor of the City of Springfield, Illinois, together with the City Council and the residents, do hereby proclaim that Tuesday, April 16, 2019, shall be Land of Lincoln Chorus Day. <laughs> call upon all residents, regardless of their talent level like mine, to sing to their heart's content in honor of the Land of Lincoln Chorus, and we really appreciate all your efforts in bringing music to all our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll hear from the uh, real musicians. Before we start... Both our chorus and the Sound Celebration Chorus know that everyone in this room, in this city, and the country can sing. Sometimes you just have to be taught. We know you sing in the car, <laughs> in the shower, in the kitchen, or while you're working. 
Join us on a Tuesday night at 7, and we will teach you to sing. And I'm sure the Sound Celebration Chorus will do the same thing at 7 o'clock on Monday night. Again, here for your pleasure, one of our favorite songs. going through our zoning session and the first item on the agenda is docket number 2019-001 for the property located at 264 Maple <coughs> Grove Lane. The petitioner is the prop club. Present zoning classification is R1 single family residence district section 155.016. Requested zoning relief a petition to vary section 9 docs of a or, or, do we have to go through this? No. I'm not okay. Even. Is this going to be withdrawn? Mr. Mayor, uh, we worked on this for the last uh, couple weeks, and we've come to a, a agreement that they will uh, turn the dock. It's not going to go out 180 feet. They're going to turn it north and south in instead of east and west, which would have put them at a, uh, to exceed the 100-foot rule. Uh, turning it north and south, and they're going to butt it up to their old dock, which is going to which is only 95 feet. So with that, they they. Uh, have agreed to it. I met with the Maple Grove Homeowners Association, and they're they're in compliance. They're in agreement also. So with that, we will not need the variance. So at this time, I'll make a motion to withdraw the uh, variance request. Second. We moved and seconded to withdraw the motion. Uh, before we take a vote, uh, well, we'll go ahead and take that vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. At this time, I'd uh, like to have someone make the motion to allow. Alderwoman Doris Turner to participate by way of phone. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-011 for the property located at 1601, 1605, 1609, 1613. 1617 and 1623 South State Street. Petitioner is... Mr. Mayor, I in the interest of saving time, there'll be a motion to continue this for 30 okay. days. Second. Been moved and second to continue this for 30 days. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the... Uh, Agenda is docket number 2019-081 for the property located at 1336 South Lincoln. And this has been withdrawn by the petitioner. Is that correct, Corporation Council? Uh, that, that is the, that's the information that's been provided. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have to take a vote? No. No, it's been withdrawn. Okay. Next time on the agenda is docket number 2019-012 for the property located at 2430 North Dirksen Parkway. Petitioner is Jackson Family Limited Partnership. Present zoning classification is B2, General Business Service District, Section 155.034. Amended requested zoning relief reclassification to B1, Highway Business Service District, Section 155.033. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is approval of the requested B1 zoning, but denial of the requested variance. 
Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is approved. The amended petition withdrawing the request for a variance and granting the reclassification to B1. Chair will entertain a motion. I make a motion to accept the Regional Planning Commission recommendation. Second. Second. Been moved and second to accept the Planning and Zoning Regional Planning Commission recommendation. And second, any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. Alderman Turner, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. And the zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. I'd like or the to, recommendation, rather. I'd like to hold this for 30 days until we can get a meeting set up with okay. the pros and cons. It's been moved to hold agenda docket number 2019-013 for the property located at 1905 and 1905 and a half Elizabeth Street. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. And that concludes our zoning portion of the meeting. This time, the chair recognizes Treasurer Busher for the presentation of the financial report. Thank you, Mayor Langfelder. The corporate fund in the month of March had a beginning balance of $6,989,016. We took in total receipts in the month of March of $8,117,663. We had total disbursements of $9,070,909, which left the corporate fund with an ending balance in the month of March of $6,035,770. This concludes my report, Mayor Langfelder. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to approve the financial report? So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion <coughs> carries. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the April 3rd, 2019 City Council meeting and approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of ordinances into the record of this city council Move. meeting. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda in the record of this city council Move. meeting. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So moved. Second. second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. All those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. Alderman Turner, how do you vote? Yes. The consent agenda passes. Ten voting yes, none voting no. Notice number 2017 1030327018 2018-410, 2018-5545, 2019-008, and 2019-169 remain tabled or in committee. Is there any action on any of those? Next item on the agenda is number 2019-172, an ordinance authorizing execution of an annexation agreement between the city of Springfield. Illinois and Ricky L. Booth for property located at 400 North Stephen Avenue. The chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the city council to hold a public hearing regarding this annexation agreement. Move, second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion passes. The public hearing is now open. Does anybody wish to address the city council regarding this annexation agreement? Chair will entertain a motion to recess the public hearing and reconvene the regular meeting of the city council. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place the agenda number 2019-172 on final passage. So moved. 
Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. The item. Mr. Turner, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. The item passes. Ten voting or eleven voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is 2019-177, an ordinance approving the appointment of Craig W. Colebrook, J.D., to the Springfield Historic Sites Commission. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-177 on final passage. Second. second. Moving and second. Any discussion? I know Craig's here. Um, I don't know if you want to come forward and say anything. Uh, just real quick, uh, I look forward yep, to If you'd like. <laughs> That's a fact. Not how it works. I'm really not worth that much fuss. Uh, I just really look forward to serving on the commission and helping out the city however I can. Uh, I know I've met a lot of you, uh, Alderman McMenamin, and I, uh, I'm one of his constituents, so I've uh, bothered him quite a bit over the years, and uh, I really look forward to it. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. <clears throat> Alderman Turner, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance passes, 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-179, an ordinance authorizing the repair of the Unit 33 West Condensant Pump from FlowServe uh, US Inc. in an amount not to exceed $94,471 for the Office of Public Utilities for emergency passage. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-179 on final passage. So move. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. Alderman Turner, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. And the ordinance passes 11 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2019-180, an ordinance authorizing contract number PW19-32 with Allied Transportation DBA, Republic Services, Inc., and Waste Management of Illinois for 2019 spring and fall yard waste collection and disposal for an amount not to exceed $526,741 for the Office of Public Works for emergency passage. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-180 on emergency passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Discussion? I think we do have quite a bit of discussion on this. Yeah, we have uh, uh, individuals signed up to speak. I don't know if you want City Council to discuss first and call them up afterwards or vice versa. Well, uh, there's some concern about <clears throat> the finances of this. Is that uh, somebody prepared to discuss that, Mayor, or can you tell us? Yeah, um, I think OBM, Julie Zogardar is here. Uh, they put together where we currently stand as far as the balance within the fund and uh, current programs of such. And then uh, by going forward with the uh, collection that was presented last week, what that would, how that would impact the fund. So I don't know if you'd want to cover that. Sure. Julie, if you would, please. This was sent kind of late in the day by email, but does everybody have this little color printed sheet? This is really simple. When we did the original projection. I can't hear you, Julie. Could you speak in there, please? Thank you. Can you, you. Can you hear me now? I yes. Think yes. Let up on it. Frank, they can't hear it. We can't hear her. Now, can you hear me? OK. So when we did the original projections in February during budget time, this was one of the funds that we kind of had on our watch list. It's a self-contained fund. It's a fee-for-service fund. Just as a reminder of the revenue history, in September of 2016, which would have been fiscal year 17, we doubled the $1.50 monthly fee to $3. Each dollar yields approximately $440 to $460,000 annually. The first two years of collection at the higher $3 rate give us $1,381,000. As we take our single sheet, we've tried to simplify it, um, we are projecting a $1.3 million revenue source for the current fiscal year 2020. And against that are operating expenses of $1.65 million. The red number of negative $355,000 puts us in a revenue negative situation. In other words, there's a structural imbalance 
in the fund. We are spending down reserves for FY 2020 in order to keep the program levels the same. Those program levels include this ordinance before us of $526,000. On the bottom half of the sheet, you see a detail of the programs. If you recall, OBM and the mayor are trying to move towards program budgeting, and this is a prime example of a fund that we've converted to program costs. We have personal services and benefits of one person, and then those bracketed numbers, starting with 10,000 and ending with 56,000, are current service levels provided to the citizens that total right about $1.5 million. That $1.5 million can be found in your budget lines in line 1232, contractual services. So we see we have the total of 1.6. This is not sustainable at this level. Revenues versus expenses is not sustainable at this level. And it's simple math. Either there's a revenue adjustment or there's a service level adjustment. That's where we are right now. Can we ask questions or we have to wait until? Yep, go ahead. So, so Julie, if um, there's a proposal out there to um, add a dollar more to the, the funds, where will that put us? That would add about um, 440 to 450,000 a year. <clears throat> and that would put you uh, revenue positive. That 355 will become roughly 100,000 to the good. Mm -hmm. At that point, it's a management and council decision whether that's a sustainable fund balance, whether that's where you want to be. But that would correct any deficit. Um, can I give you the next column over, though? Yes. So if you increase by a dollar and then you expand the program by the number we've heard, like anywhere from 240 to 270, the with additional 270 shows where the program would be without the dollar. So it's a simple case of dropping in that additional $440,000. This chart has shown a service level increase without any increase in revenue. But just remember, every dollar is about 440000 So is, there, is this a hard line uh, proposal, or, is there, or can it be streamlined down to drop the revenue, drop the expenditures uh, on this thing? If, if we didn't pick up every other week, if we moved it to once a month or something, what would that do? You know, that's a program question that I don't have the ability to answer. That would be somebody from Public Works. Hello. How's it going, everyone? Say your name, please. So Programs Thank Coordinator, you. Public Works, Dean Revis. We got several bids on our original RFP that we put out this year for yard waste in general. Um, and one of them, actually two of them, dealt with just that as far as a once a month pickup. Although it would start from April and go all the way to December, if it's just once a month pickup, it's kind of similar to what we've done in the past. Last spring, we did a free yard waste and we did a pickup in April and a pickup in May. And so you picked your stuff, you put your stuff curbside for once during April, once during May, and we got a ton of calls from people who put their stuff out on the first week, right, in April, and they missed their actual pickup, and so they're not gonna get picked up until May. So that once a month pickup actually creates a lot of issues, especially when we do free pickups and stickers, and there gets this confusion between the waste haulers of who's picking them up, is it free pickup, or do we still pick up the stickered bags, is it two programs working together, so, yeah. I understand somebody bid about three hundred and seventy thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars. Was that a one? T it was an under option one. Is that a uh, one month pickup or is that a seven month pickup? That's a one month pickup. Um, that was one of our bidders. They did three hundred and seventy one thousand. It was without disposal costs. So in our RFP, all of the haulers um, or potential contractors had to include disposal cost fees for it, so we have no way of projecting how much that would actually be. They put the overall disposal cost on the city. Uh, I asked a question last time, and they said the city pays the disposal cost irregardless. So, so in our current In our current Evans contract that we have, which is actually is expires at the end of June, the way that it's set up is that in the April, during our free collection of both yard waste and branches, and in the fall of the collection of branches, as far as the free collection of branches and yard waste, 
the city or their contract is subsidiary is actually get to drop off for free. That's a contract that expires in June and we don't know where that's going moving forward. So right now, the spring collection of yard waste and branches, they can drop off for free at Evans, but we don't know if that'll be the, the case in the future when we So we we've it. never tried to negotiate anything beyond that? As, as far as what? As far as the cost to the city. As far as Evans dropping stuff off for free? Well, if we've got a, a yard waste, some uh, purveyor that wants to pick up things for 370000 how much on top of that would be the cost to the city for drop-off fee? So it's hard telling. Um, we don't particularly, we try to create baseline information as far as how much yard waste is dropped off throughout the year, literally through our free collection period and through the haulers. The haulers send in quarterly reports that actually give us tickets from Evans as far as the stickered bags that they picked up throughout the year. We don't have full reports from all of the haulers. Um, they're definitely not all inclusive. And then Evans actually gets bags dropped off to them as well. Residents go and drop off the bags for a dollar outside of the free pickup. So the overall yield of how much would be collected through April to December is really unknowing. We have a very low, low number, um, but we're expecting that would probably be double as far as what Rex Evans is kind of telling us from that location. So it's very difficult for us to actually create an overall cost, kind of overall picture of w with the one that one of the haulers gave us where it's just overall pickup, but then it doesn't Does include it also disposal. include any drop-off by residents? The contract with Evans, it includes yeah. the $1, so it, you can either choose to pay $2 for a sticker curbside, or you can drop them off at Evans for a dollar. So that is actually wrapped into that Evans contract. So oh, I heard today that uh, Evans was raising his prices anyway. Is that correct? Do you know anything about that? <clears throat> Well, I mean, as far as overall, what we know is that last year it was $9 a cubic yard to drop things off there at Evans. Now it's $10 a cubic yard. So if I'm a hauler and I'm picking up yard waste, that's what's going to cost me overall. But we don't know as far as our contract, if they're going to increase it, it's a contract we've held and we've renewed it twice. And so the, the cost for that contract is actually artificially low. There's never been an increase. So we do project that to but be But wouldn't that be higher. pertinent information that we need to make a decision for the future. If we're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to approve something for this year and then for the following years, we not, we really need to have that information. If he's going to raise his cost, it's going to be additional costs on top of the dollar that we're talking about. Correct. Right? No, I, I totally agree on that. Okay. Yeah. Alderman Donlin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I hate to oversimplify things. Before we get into these hypotheticals on what if we do this and what if we do that, I want to make sure I understand the program that we are presently offering our residents. It's already been announced. It's already We've already had a pickup, at least in Board 9. And the way I understand it is, and maybe this is a question for Mrs. Zolgadar, if you look at the sheet that was handed to us, it says the budgeted column. Uh, we are, with the, with the program that's already announced and underway, we're $355,000 Negative. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Where is where does the, where's that money coming from? It's fund our, balance. Fund fund balance mm -hmm. from the from the general corporate fund fund. No balance. no no the fund balance within the waste and recycling fund. So we've had kind of a cushion for a little bit, and now we're definitely starting to eat. How much into is that. that cushion? How much is in that fund that is? I think it's gone back and forth a little bit, but anywhere from four twenty to five five something. Can you like explain what that? Is that about right? That's correct. It's a pure cash fund balance. And so, again, if you go back to the sheet, the beginning uh, balance was 420329 for FY 2020. And these programs spend down the reserve to $65,085. All right. I see what, you, what you're saying. So if we were to uh, venture into the eliminating the sticker program and... Uh, offering a pickup every other week for our residences, that puts us at what? A negative 625? Is that correct? It's, it would be the next one with the additional 270K fiscal year 2020. It would be the negative 204915. Your correct? ending balance would be negative 204915, which would mean passive borrowing from other funds within that bank account. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what this was put forward by the, the department uh, clearly a couple weeks ago. What was the plan to fund this deficit? Ultimately, kind of look at some of the different funds that we actually have. Um, kind of historically, 
overall yard waste, branches for that matter, branches in general, we have picked up historically through our public works and it wasn't actually incurred through the waste and recycling fund. It was only until last year that we actually did that. Um, and it's the same thing with the yard waste. We had certain things that were picked up. We picked up the fall historic, no, sorry, we picked up the spring historically and we contracted out the fall. So it's really not until last year where we started really contracting and putting a lot of pressure on the waste and recycling fund. So it's kind of shifting some of the programs back was the idea to try and help pay for that improved service as far as the 270 that you see in that column. So the short answer is we would need to up, obtain readjust. funds from other sources. Readjust, yeah. And well, we, within the waste and recycling fund and then possibly within our own Department of Public Works as far as um, I think there was some talk on offsetting some of the costs as far as yard waste through our sewer fund or what have you, but that's nothing agreed upon. Okay, but there are other funds that we can draw upon. Yes. But if we look at it, this this fund exclusively, mm -hmm. it's 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 extremely safe to say that it stresses the fund significantly oh, if yes. we add if we change it, add yes. more costs, so to speak. Yes, I mean without obviously any type of increase, it's so, negative, 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 and getting worse and worse. So there's been discussion by the council to, uh, first of all, it, uh, you know, I've, I've spoken to m many people in, in our ward. Actually, met with an association board last night. And through, just throughout the idea, of what happens if we were to eliminate between the months of between the months of April and November, eliminate the sticker program? So there is no more sticker program, no need to go buy stickers. Hmm. And uh, as the director outlined a couple weeks ago, your yard waste would be picked up every other week, okay. but there would be there would need to be, according to these figures we have tonight, some type of a uh, uh, increase in the in the waste and recycling fee. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what, is, what has been talked about is uh, $1, so it'd be $12 a year. So instead of individuals having to go out and purchase all these stickers that are $2 a piece, you essentially pay $12 and it's all picked up. Correct. And uh, so what that would do, obviously, that would eliminate the need to go out and buy the stickers. You'd get everything, if you, everything you put out picked up, but it would also uh, eliminate a significant amount of problems throughout the city. We mm -hmm. see these, anybody, it's, it's no secret, anybody that drives around anywhere in the city of Springfield, not just Ward 9, you drive around, you see these bags, even though they're supposed to be picked up by the haulers and build, a, and build a, the uh, property owners where these bags are located for months, though that there would be absolutely no reason for that to occur <coughs> between these periods of time. Is that right? Is that right? Correct. Well, and, and back to um, my past idea of Evans as well, this helps with the contract in June when we're talking about an every other week pickup, then we're also talking about not having to do the free drop off during the spring and during the fall, which we're hoping that that would actually decrease overall increase of costs that we're projecting them to actually give us. So, but yeah, it addresses all those issues. I, I just have one, one general statement. I, 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 uh, I just want to make it, just give my uh, gut, my gut. Every once in a while you got to do that, right? Um, I, I think it's clear that if we don't do something on the revenue side, then, then, we, then we have an issue with the, the fund being healthy. Right. Um, however, uh, I'm very skeptical every time that I'm given numbers, um, and I'm told, we were told two weeks ago that the money was there, and now we're told that it's stressing the fund, and, not, and we're also told that there's other funds that could be utilized. Um, I, I, I think that uh, it would be nice that before, if, it, if a proposal were to come forward, that, that all that information could be made extremely clear before right. we're talking about it among this horseshoe, because uh, I, I think that's, that's fair to our residents, fair to all of us, and that's all I have to say. Agreed. Yeah, I think with regards to that, uh, that's the service department speaking, and then you, tonight you're hearing the accounting department speaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's where the discrepancy is with regards to that. And um, I think everybody's in agreement that something has to be done. Uh, what's the right approach that we're trying to figure out? Alderman Senor? Yeah, um, I just want to expand on Alderman Donlan's thoughts. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because if it is going to stress other funds, what other funds is it going to stress and how is it going to affect them as far as service to the constituents? Because I like the program. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's something that should be implemented because we have various problems in Ward 2 with the bags that are still out on the curb. I, I know I can take you to a couple places where bags have been there for right. about a month. But so how do we get the other part is how do we get the residents the information to know that this program's in effect? Because no matter what you do, even with the door hangers, somebody's right. always going to not know that the program's in place. So how do we implement the program so that people will know, I mean, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, 
Definitely neighborhood campaigns, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, to get, to get the word out so that people will take part. And, and a lot of the problem is um, we have a lot of renters that it's not my house, so I don't have to right. take care of it. So how do we make the owners, uh, uh, how do we make the owners take care of the properties that they have renters in that aren't taking care of, of their properties? I think that's, the, well, that still comes down to a housing issue, right? Um, so we would still have that whole process in place when it comes to that. But I mean, as far as getting the word out there and letting people know that there's this new program, like don't go out and buy stickers if, if that's what you're talking about passing as far as the improved service, then it's definitely working with our communications department to try and just flood the city with information. And I know we did kind of have ultimately a plan as far as people that already went out and bought stickers. I, I'm one of them. <laughs> I bought $20 worth of stickers, so I have them sitting there or what have you. Um, but from the program one from April to December 31st and then from January to March, mind you, they won't pick up obviously in the dead of winter and all that different things, but you would be able to use those stickers throughout those months that the program doesn't cover. So the stickers would still be kind of in effect for like another year. So, so just to reiterate, I would like, as Alderman Donnelly stated, what programs or what funds it's going to affect and how is it going to affect those funds and what, to the extent that is it going to cut services that we're already have in place for the constituents? I think it was ultimately looking at the different programs that we have within the waste and recycling itself to see, okay, what are the programs where has put stress on the funds that at one point in time wasn't. So branches is one looking at that as far as actually right now we're, we're currently doing the fall. We don't have a choice, right? But in the fall, is that a, something that the fund actually has to take over, right? So looking at actually cutting that, going back to the garage, garage taking over that as far as our own public works. Um, but also looking at hazardous waste. Um, that's why it went down to 75000 we predominantly put through an ordinance that included both a spring and a fall hazardous waste collection. Do we really need that? It's a big question. So going back literally just to spring, we have a May 11th deadline, or that's our date for that. And then so the last point, Ms. Zogadar, it looks like no matter what we do, we're, we're going to be negative. Is that correct, according to the chart that you gave out? We are negative from the standpoint that there's a structural imbalance between the operating revenues and the operating expenses. Right. We're projecting this fiscal year that just started that we will end with a $65,000 balance. I do want to speak to one issue about other right, funds. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, I mean, from the sheet you gave us, there's no, no time are we going to be in the black across here. Is that correct? Okay, you're ending from, from your year even on your projected revenues. Everything that we have is red. There's nothing in black on okay, that. Okay, you want to read year in balance right. for fiscal year 2020 is a positive $65,085. That's the one, but we're projecting with the even with the additional dollar, it says we're going to be negative 204,000. Am I reading that wrong, or is that that's with additional expense but revenue neutral, where but, we've made no increase in but revenue? It, but it'll still ending. The ending balance will be negative. Is that correct? That is correct Thank because we've depleted the balance. But uh, there's been a couple of questions about other funds within public works. Mm -hmm. um, we used to assign certain costs to the sewer fund, certain leaf pickup, and the justification was the program cost was put in the sewer fund because it's a very real problem when excess leaves and yard debris clog storm sewers and things. So that causes problems in the sewer system. Um, that's a management philosophy. Do you want all your recycling and yard waste costs to reside in the recycling fund, or do you want to put some in the sewer fund? That's, that's not for us in OBM to answer. Like I say, that's a, a management policy. But that's what's kind of been alluded to. When we put all the yard waste costs in the recycling fund, that was certainly one of the stressors that has spent down some of the fund balance. And I'd have to look, I didn't have time, I'd have to look to see when we actually shifted all those costs over. Is it a proper representation to be able to look at one fund and say that's all the yard waste cost? It is, but then you have to have the revenue to support it. All the women DeCento. Um, just to be clear, we had to put this on emergency passage this week, three of us did, to complete the spring pickup program and create a fall pickup program. Now, if we're going to go to an every other week type of program, we don't need, I mean, this isn't going to take effect immediately, but we're not going to need a spring and fall pickup program going forward, correct? Correct. Because it will just happen every two weeks. Right. Yeah. Alderman Hanauer. Uh, and to, to piggyback on that, um, so what, what would the savings be if we didn't do four weeks at the end of the year? 
in the fall. Just, yeah, in the fall. You're only, you just stay. And then every year, you don't have a four week at the beginning and four week at the end. Right. You started it at April 1st or whatever, and it's every two weeks, right? I, what, what's the savings there? So I did actually and, present that to Republic as far as if it would have decreased their overall cost um, for the, every other week and then actually just cut that four weeks, four so we're week saving a month. weekly sweep. Yeah. Because yeah. um, to me, that actually adds quite an increase. Um, and I was actually just told that the price would ultimately stay the same because yard waste is increasing in the fall. But so the, the, other, the other aspect that I, I see about this is in the past, we've used public works crews mm -hmm. um, to do the spring and fall pickup. Um, what's, what's it save us um, if we would go to this every two weeks, we're not using, you know, is there, what's the savings there that we can have them start working earlier on, on uh, uh, sidewalks and some of the street repairs and things like that, 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 that they do, you know, the, I mean, there's a, there's plenty of work to be, to go around. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of positive feedback about this and the, 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 the unfortunate, the unfortunate thing about this is we threw it out there and there's going to be a lot of upset people if we don't go forward with it. I mean, and well, there's going to be I a lot of upset people when we run out of money too. I understand it goes, that. It goes over here to two, 2021 that we're going to be eight hundred thirty-one thousand dollars. I, I I understand that. I understand that. But my my concern is we threw it out there without, I guess, vetting it first, and that that's a concern. That was Director Mahoney's parting gift. Solomon <laughs> Tylen. Been gone a day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with talking about the finance, financial part of it. Um, I guess the part that is most surprising to me and probably to the rest of the aldermen is that the you guys had a, a comfortable fund, mm -hmm. and then we started we kept adding more and more things to the fund without adding revenue. Okay. And apparently, the stress of the branch pickup fall and spring of almost two hundred fifty thousand. What else got added in that wasn't there before two years ago? Um, that's really honestly it. But okay, so the bulky item has basically stayed the same. It's gone up just a little bit. The electronic collection has been added in. I don't know if you guys remember the past, but it used to be like a one-day collection event, and it was horrendous. Um, so yeah. this program has been introduced. It costs a little bit more, but really not, not by that much. Um, it's really coming from that spring branch and the, and the yard waste when it comes to that because it wasn't so historically the, part of ours. A lot of the stuff that, as you said before, was being picked up by either the sewer department or by the public works department in general mm -hmm. has now been transferred to this fund, mm -hmm. which had a substantial fund balance and now is being spent down, as we can see here on this paper. Um, without any revenue being moved over to cover, I, I think it's fair to say, in my, in my memory, I think 250000 came out of the sewer fund quite regularly to go toward the, the yard waste and Correct. the yard waste. Correct. So we're talking that this got moved in and the revenue didn't come with it. Correct. So I understand how it can stress out the fund fairly, fairly quickly. Four right. years is a million dollars. Right. There goes your fund balance. Right. Um, so, I mean, one of the first things that we're obviously, we are going to have to talk about one way or the other, whether we expand to the three-quarter year pickup or whether we stay with the current year pickup, with it being in this fund balance, we have to have a serious discussion about adding to the revenue stream for the waste and recycling fee either way, in my opinion, looking at this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Now, the second half of that comes in that if we were to raise it by the dollar, and let's go with the low end and say it's 440000 <laughs> the 440 is enough to get you by probably the first two years comfortably while maintaining a little bit of a fund balance. But I think once you start, if the costs increase on any of these, the next council is going to have to be looking at an additional increase in the waste and recycling fee or in reducing services Correct. within two years. Fund. Or something has to be paid for by another fund. Yes, right. exactly. So I, I just want everyone to understand 
both in, in the crowd and around the shoe, what we're talking about here, that this isn't sustainable without doing something. Now, talking with my constituents, there's not been a single person who didn't see the value of going to the non-sticker program. The average person in Ward 8 who actually takes care of their yard buys at least 15 stickers a year. Most of my people are telling me they're buying 20, 25, 30 stickers a year. We have the trees, we have the gumballs, we have the branches. I'm sure six and seven are the same way. And a five. Nine, two. Most of my constituents are seeing where they are going to save money going to the no sticker program and they are fine with going to four or five dollars total for the waste program but they don't want to see anything any farther. The other thing is, is they are saying, and this is coming from some of the people who've been around the block, they've said, if we do this, we don't want any new programs. Let's pay for what we're paying for. Don't, let's not let the next guy come in and have this wonderful, great idea where we're gonna use the waste and recycling program to plant trees, or to do this, or to do that. Let's pay for what we want and let's stop. Now, that's the other point I wanted to make to the horseshoe. If I'm going to vote for an increase in the waste and recycling fee, it will be to pay for the programs that my constituents want to have. And I'm willing to put something in there that says that any new programs have to have their own revenue source. Alderman Redpath? I agree with you totally, Chris. That is exactly what it's got to say. But I want to hear from the director. If, Director Nate, if you wouldn't mind jumping up here quick, because I want to make sure that you understand that they're committing your uh, other fund uh, other fund sources to uh, supplement this thing. Are you good with that? Are you good with taking money out of the sewer fund and that kind of thing? We have concerns with taking money from the sewer fund. Um, we have, uh, you know, the, the fund balance got very low the other year, and we had to, we had to borrow money actually from another fund in order to supplement the sewer fund. Um, and we have pay go projects um, that we need to take care of this year as well is bond debt service that we have to pay for for you know the Cook Street project and other projects. That's what I needed to know because you know the thing is is that we all want to do this. We really do. We just got to find a way to pay for it. And that right now it's going the wrong direction. By the, in, in three years it's going to be a million dollars. I mean it's not it's not something that we can just pull money out of the hat. And and it's a great idea, but we just got to figure <laughs> out a way to do it. Convince me. Figure. Tell me how you're going to do it. I'll vote for it. I'm not going to vote for something that's going to put us in debt where we have to stop the either the program next time, or we have to go dig into some other fund. His, I got sidewalks that need fixed, roads that need fixed, sewers that need fixed. And I don't want them digging into those funds to, to try to pay for this program. Convince me. Tell me where you're going to get the money. I'll vote for it. All the woman descends up. What's not sustainable is what we're doing now. Because everyone around this horseshoe, as well as everyone driving the streets of Springfield, see bags piled up from last fall pickup that were never that were put out too late. Heck, I saw a Christmas tree a couple weeks ago. That was at my house. No, Probably. <laughs> um, so what we're doing now is not sustainable. We have got to, whether it's a dollar, which is what I'm comfortable with, um, or two dollars, which I think is asking a little too much. I mean, it's $24 a year. It's, you know, 12 stickers. To me, I think one dollar is sustainable for right now. Um, I, I agree with Alderman Thailand. We don't want to come back here and say, okay, we're going to need an, an extra dollar. But if people work this program correctly and if we keep an eye on things, then that that's going to fix the broken system. Alderman, I agree with you on that. I really do. But the thing is, is that when we get to the point where we can't do it any longer, we're going to have to kill the program. How is people going to take that? They said you, you put it in and you take it out. That's the problem. If, if we find a revenue source that works, it, we can all vote for it. But if we just put in the $1, that's fine. I'm voting for it. But the bottom line is that's not going to be enough to sustain it. We're going to end up in the hole. And we got to be. We got to look at that. The sewer fund cannot take this hit. It really can't. What if we split the difference and look at a dollar fifty? Alderman, uh, well, somebody back to the math. Uh, how much money have we depleted from the sewer fund over the last four years? Well, in regards to uh, the 
pickups. In 2014, there was approximately $150,000, well, 2014 and 2015. And then in 2016, it came out of the waste, half of it came out of the waste and recycling fund, as well as half out of the corporate fund. And then in 2017 and 2018, it was all out of the waste and recycling fund. So how much money total? So in regards to the sewer fund, approximately $300,000 in 2014 and 2015. In 2016, it was, in 2017, it was $262,000, uh, and that was when the city doing the pickup in the spring and the contractors and doing it in the fall. 17 or 18? Well, that, that was 17. 18 was $509,000. That was the four weeks in the spring and the six weeks in the fall. All of that came from the sewer fund? No. That was waste and recycling, sorry. How much sewer came fund, out of the sewer, sewer fund, fund was only 2014 and 2015, and it looks like it was $150,000 each year, so $300,000. Those are the numbers I have at this time, going back that far. Alderman Proctor? Oh, no, my hands is up. Alderman Hanauer? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm concerned. Uh, okay, what we have in front of us is the emergency passage to keep the spring and the, the spring pickup at least going. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what we're discussing here. Spring and fall. Spring and fall. So what happens if we just vote on this and try to get our ducks in order on, on the every other week mm -hmm. and then and come back, try to get, you know, within the next couple weeks or whatever and try to get our, try to get the numbers right that way and have everything written down so we know what, what we're looking at and then present it at that time and, and, and vote at that time on it. But in the meantime, we vote on on the emergency passage for the spring and fall. We can always adjust it, perhaps, with it, talking to Republic or whoever. Are you are you okay? Is, is what people think about that? I'm just throwing that out there. I think if we don't take action tonight, then this goes into the black hole of city council and we never see it again. That's what I think. I think we should probably hear from the people who have signed up to speak, and uh, then we'll, we can reconvene about what we've just discussed. Okay, I, I, I just was throwing that out there. That's the kind of the last resort kind of deal that, you know, so. I, I, if, I, should we call people up or do you wanna? I, I just want Alderman to, Donlin. just a point of clarification. Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm reading this on the screen. It's not any profound statement here, but the way I understand it is that the, the way it reads here is the, the, uh, the proposal in front of us is for four weeks uh, in April and six weeks in the fall. Everybody agree with that? Yes. So if we were to fund just what you do, what you're suggesting, it's just for four weeks. So it's just the month of April and then six weeks in, in the fall. It's not, it's not, I've heard people say it's two months in the spring and that's not the case. It's just, it's just for the four weeks in April. All right. That's all I had to say, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you wish to make comment now or wait for the residents? Alderman Fulgenzi. I, I guess I don't really understand that. So we're talking about 10 weeks, that's 526,000? So it, it, it's four weeks in the, like right now, we're actually under the four weeks. It's, so it's a four week sweep, but it's two pickups per resident. And in the fall, it's six weeks and it's six picks up, pickups. So it's a weekly sweep of the entire city in the fall. For 526,000. It's separated between uh, Republic in the spring and then waste management in the fall. But the total is 526. 526, correct. Alderman Redpath? Is there, is there parts of the recycling program that we could cut back on to get, get, increase our revenue on this, uh, on this fund to sustain this? I mean, it, I mean, for example, the branches. I mean, because we've added programs, correct? We've added programs over the years to to that. That's correct, and I believe Julie gave you a list of the various project, the programs that we do have. So you would have to choose out of one of those or if, some of those. If so, bulky oh. item. Is if in we a got program. rid of the bulky item program, which we have been in talks with, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> if we if we put it yeah. on the waste haulers, or if we come up with a program, and we have been in discussions about that. Um, because that's, that's a program that isn't really working either. Um, if I have to call solid waste crews all the time to go pick up a mattress that was dumped here um, or a desk that was left there, then obviously 
people don't know about that program and aren't using it either, or correctly. I think that's through Habitat for Humanity? Correct, right. it's Habitat for Humanity, and it's actually a program that's been expanded. So actually, our, they are encompassing our fly dumping th around the city as well, and the program is working much quicker as far as picking up fly dumped, um, whether it's mattresses, furniture, what have you, throughout the city. So I, I think they're actually doing a better job. I'm not talking badly about the program. Right. I'm just talking about what I no, see. No, I know Ward 6, you guys have a ton. <laughs> on a daily basis. Yeah. 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 I mean, and that, that's definitely an education issue, too, as far as, like, these services are here. You need to take advantage of them. Well, as the social media queen, so. I don't think I can do anything more to inform you know. my constituents <laughs> of yeah, what's fair. going on in Ward 6. Um, yes. Um, I mean, let's let's be honest. Here's one of, the, one of the biggest problems we have with the bags is they sit out there, even though technically they're supposed to get picked up and they're supposed to build a, the, I guess, the property owner, right? But they never, they don't. The waste haulers don't do it. If they would do what they were supposed to do, what's required by, based on the contract, we wouldn't have a lot of these problems. But, I mean, and, and Kristen, you're right. We have areas, and, and they're in every ward. I don't care what ward you're in. They're in every ward where you go down, and there's bags that are out on the street for months at a time. And it's because people are not following the contract that, we, that we've given them. Um, you know, and I know uh, Director Mahoney, when, when he talked about it, he talked about the amount of work that, that's spent with housing because they have to go out and site and all that. I mean, and that's the biggest issue is that their contractors, the, the, they're not following the contract. Alderwoman DeSento. Waste haulers are also, when it's very confusing, when there's houses that are close together, what bags go where, who's billed for what. Mm -hmm. I just had a neighbor complain to me saying, hey, I got billed for his bags. Or people just put their bags with someone else's bags. So, I mean, we've got to eliminate this ridiculousness. I mean, we have got to do something. The first thing people see when they come to the city from the outside is it's dirty. It doesn't look nice. Well, and I got to tell you guys too. Um, I've got a good stretch of West Lawrence heading toward MacArthur, and I think Andrew's got it from thereafter. Um, once it hits summer and people start putting their bags on the curb, you're, you've got these kids who they love to hit those bags, <laughs> and then they go flying and they go everywhere else, and then you've got a mess on your hands. And I think some of the neighborhood association people down here know exactly what I'm talking about. All it takes is one good Friday night, and there could be 30, 35 houses worth of bags that have been hit by a car and hit and run. We just did a ward-wide cleanup in Ward 6, and one garage was stacked three bags high, full of leaves, full of yard waste, and wrapped it in plastic mm. so they could just put it out when spring pickup came. No plastic. Well, they took the plastic. I mean, they would take the plastic off. I mean, Polly, Polly saw the whole thing. It was, it's ridiculous. We've, we have to do better. But I think it's time to hear from the constituents. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with Jill Steiner. Get your name and address for the council. We'd appreciate it. Jill Steiner, 2328 Lynn Haven in Ward 8. Um, so I'd just like to share with you what it is like um, for feet on the ground for somebody who lives on the corner. And on Lynn Haven, everyone on our side of the street is on a corner lot. And so what that means is on my block, I'm one of the younger people on the block and have the ability to do that. But what that means is when you talk about trying to put a fee on something, if you know you're gonna put a fee on something and you're gonna pay it as part of your bill, it becomes more equitable and across the board and becomes able to, ban to budget and do that. Leaves do not know what month it is and they do not know whose property it is. So we bag our leaves and then we bag every piece of leaf that comes onto our property and we are required by the city to keep the grate clear. I own a pair of knee-high galoshes. I'm out there in two foot of water doing the drain on my corner, the drain in the other corner because that woman can't do it, the drain that tees into a property which is in no man's land, and I'm doing the other corners as well. So I'm doing this in snow, rain, sleet, ice, year round to try to clear that. And just on the, on the thing in terms of that is that 
when those leaves that don't get picked up turn to grit and then they get wet, they are like concrete. If we could figure out to make, how to make those into road surfacing, we'd be solving a problem right there. They, they grit up if anybody's left it and they've not picked it up after the snow comes through, and it is like cement. I have had to take out a pick to pick at the solid, frozen stuff on top of the grates because not everybody can do their leaves because not everybody can afford stickers. <coughs> Because when you go to buy the stickers and suddenly you have to pay $30 and you have to buy the bags, suddenly that's something you did not budget for. I want to share with you the lady on the next corner. Her leaves fell in December, unfortunately, so she missed the fall pickup. So she left them on the ground because she is not able to manage them. They were on the ground all winter long. They turned into grit. That corner street was flooded every time it rained. I must have cleared it at least six times this winter myself and it flooded every single time. She hired somebody last week to bag her leaves, 72 bags of leaves. If she had to buy a sticker, she does not have that money. Those bags are now sitting out there, 72 bags to be able to do that. There's got to be some way. We're looking for you to, for leadership. We're looking for you to make it cost effective, but we're looking for you to make sure that also you understand. This is a real quality of life issue, and every time those things go in the sewer, then you're increasing my damage to my sewer, which then I'm paying for itself. There's gotta be a way to wrap all this together to talk about how many garbage trucks go down the street in our neighborhood. That's every single day, Monday through Friday, it's a different truck. We're talking about damage to the sewer, we're talking about damage to infrastructure. There's got a way to look at this, and I'm asking you to stop piecemealing this, and I'm asking you to stop doing this in half measures. Figure this out. There's lots of people who will help you and give you ideas, but at the end, do the leadership. If it costs more money, it costs more money, but do it equitably so everybody's paying. So my neighbor down the street is not spending $2 times 72 for somebody who didn't do it. And our neighbors are good neighbors. If they had the money, they'd put stickers on them, but they don't. They don't have it, and so they don't have a way to do with it. Some of them are rentals. Some of them are people who are disabled. Some of the people are elderly. They just, they would do it. They would hire somebody to do it, but then they have to go to stickers, and it's, it's more than they can manage. So I would be even willing to do some sort of special roundup program to make sure that people who can't afford to buy the bags I will contribute to help you buy the bags, but I think we just need to address this. And this is what I do every single day in terms of keeping that clean and taking responsibility for that. And I am not the only one in this city that lives on a corner. So I ask you to take that into consideration and I look forward to uh, having you solve this problem. And if you need any assistance from us, we'll be happy to help you. Thank you. Next is Michael Higgins. Uh, Michael Higgins, 1808 Dial Court. Um, I heard one alderman talk about people putting out bags and they sit there for months. Was I wrong? Yes. The, the people put them out. Well, this solves that problem because they'll get picked up every two weeks. So they won't sit out there for months regardless if there's a sticker or not, I heard. Um, another, I, maybe the same alderman say, well, how will people know that you don't have to buy stickers? Well, that's real simple. Stickers won't be for sale. <laughs> I mean, that solves that problem. You go to the hardware store or wherever, say, I need to buy a sticker. They say, no, not anymore. Just put them out every two weeks. So stickers will not be for sale. So people will learn very quick, because they can't buy a sticker. And when you talk about next year's fund being even more negative, this year's fund I don't think was negative, but they weren't taken into it, the alderman wasn't taken into the account about the fee on the waste and recycle going up. So if you do the straight numbers without taking that into account, then you know you might have issues, but when they were talking, they were talking about not even the uh, waste and recycling going up. Um, another problem is 
waste haulers have problems with, uh, they pick up bags and the neighbors uh, say, well, it's like the Shaggy song. I don't know if you know who Shaggy is, but the neighbors will say, wasn't me. <laughs> you know, so, you know, so, I mean, I don't have to pay because it wasn't me. So there you go. Um, putting this on the waste and recycling fee uh, and bumping that up, you have to determine the cost of that. But I guarantee you, you run this program for two years where people do not have to buy stickers. People will never go back to buying stickers. So then they will have a choice if you have to raise the recycling fee again. And I bet you most people would raise the recycling fee just so they don't have to go back to buying stickers. It's called leadership. You move ahead with a program. After many of you people on this horseshoe have been worried about, oh, my neighbor's gonna think this and my neighbor's gonna think that, my constituents this and that, and you implemented a program, and in two years they forgot you did it. And they accept it as a way of life. And that's what will happen this way. They will accept it as a way of life. You're not raising their taxes, you're putting it on a recycling fee. And uh, it'll become a way of life for people in Springfield. So you can deny it all you want, but the facts speak for themselves. How many of you have been afraid to pass something and it's gotten passed and no one comes to you and complains? And if they do, it's very few and far between. It's called leadership. Thank you. Next is Alice Rainey. Did she sign up? <laughs> My name is Alice Rainey, and I live at 1212 South Livingston. I know how the lady felt by going out there and cleaning the sewer, uh, which I have done. I have a lot that I know people would love to dump their leaves on, okay? Because my nephew mows it and he has a mulch mower, so it doesn't bother me a bit. But it does bother me to hear these people complain about another dollar on the waste. I bought 30 bags to give to the neighbors for cleanup. I bought the stickers for cleanup. That's a lot of money. I'd rather put $5 on waste than go out and pay $40 for stickers, because I can use the other money to buy me a lotto ticket whenever, <laughs> you know? I also think it's time that we, Mr. Redpath, and you get these people that have rental property to pay for their recycle for every unit they got, okay? Second of all, if you continue on this, he say, she say, it said, and nobody knows what you said, you're not going to have it. You'll have it like it has been. Bags standing around, getting wet, kids playing football with their football or hitting it with their baseball to see how far it bounces back. These things. We got to settle something. The, now, I'm telling you, some waste management trucks do not pick up garbage. If they do, they leave half of it on the ground. Now, I know Republic is a very nice because it does pick up some of their stuff. Now, I think it's time that we do something and make it with enough teeth in it that they understand that they have to pick up the garbage bags when they're there, bag bags, you know, waste bags, you know. I know you're laughing at me, you no, know. I was yeah, I no, know Red Path, it's me. you know. It's me. I just don't have it pink hair. It wasn't me. It's me. <laughs> it, it was you. Him. I mean, it was me. Shaggy. I'm sorry, it's hon. Right. <laughs> but I think it's time that we do that. I'll pay $5 on my recycle, on my bill, to get this passed. I think everybody else would pay that because they don't like to go buy the <laughs> stickers. I think it's great that I can get it taken care of. I want it taken care of because I will not have my neighborhood with garbage, with uh, uh, waste bags <laughs> sitting in a corner, leaking, cementing, which she said they do, okay, and ruin our look of our neighborhood. 
I will not have it. So ladies and gentlemen of this circle, get together with all your brains and figure out the proper way to get this all done and not go in the hole. Do you understand, Mayor? Sure do. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wish to, from the audience, wish to address this issue? If you come forward and state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. Jamie Adair, 2100 block of South 14th Street. And all I have to say, and I bet I will not run out that clock, what I will say to you today, I would ask you to at least consider this program as a pilot program, even if you can run the program for a time and let, let residents see how important it is and see what this program can offer our community. That's all you have to do, just try it out, see what it's like, see how the residents will like it, and I'm sure, just like it has been said already, they will like that, and they will not want to go back to what we have now, because the program we have now, it is not working. So all I'll have to say is just create a pilot program, turn this into a program that we can see how it works, because it will work better, and just do it. That's a great idea. Yes. That's, a, that's a great idea. Maybe we ought to make it a pilot program. from the other them go. I'd just like to say State that... State your um, name for the uh, record. We'd appreciate it. Donald Martin. I was hoping I wasn't misperceiving the fact that you uh, had said that there was no... Not everybody was subject to this fee because of apartment complexes or of some nature. Is this true? Uh, I'm right. not sure who made that statement. Mayor. Alderman Hanauer. Um, I... I that is true. Anything S3, correct? S3 and above uh, is not um, part of the program. Uh, what I have asked uh, is if they could do an analysis of what, what that would cost, but keep in mind what, what it would bring in. But also, you got to understand the, they're not also taking part in any of these programs. I understand that as well, but they are part of the community. They do take. I, uh, their, kid, their children go to school here. They, their roads are I, cleaned off in the wintertime. Right. I understand they, that. They are, and as far as equality before the law, they, I, like this lady said, everybody should have to pay this price, or this fee, I should say. I've, I've asked them to do an analysis and get back to us. It, it's not something that's going to be an easy thing to, to well, do. If, they, if, if everybody took a part in this particular fee, the, then that would relieve this cost immensely as far as everybody's concerned, because nobody wants a higher fees on already <coughs> out of control inflation. And that's that's basically all I had to so, address so the Alderman, council with. I'm sorry, go ahead. Have a good one. So Alderman, um, Thank you. why, if it's on the recycling fee, does it go to the re residential homeowners? So it doesn't go to the apartments? It doesn't go to like the multiplex apartments. The S3 is what I'm, I'm I'm kind of drawing a blank. Above, I think. What's that? I think it's three or four plex. Or yeah, it's like a four plex and above. So why wouldn't the landlords of those buildings be subjected to that recycling fee? If you could come up and address the uh, answer to the question, we'd appreciate it. That has actually been on my list of things to really address. We don't address that currently. So, w what kind of revenue would that bring in if that was if that was That's something? What I've asked. Huh? Yeah, total numbers. I would actually have to do an analysis and get back to you on that. See, so what the young man said that we came up here earlier about maybe putting this on a pilot program, and then we put it on a pilot program, and people knew that if we couldn't sustain this, the, the revenue for this program, that we'd have to cut it off. But if we find revenue like this that goes to, uh, to people who aren't paying, who should be paying, because they're using our, the, the gutters and the streets and the sidewalks, if, that, if those apartment buildings, they should be subjected to the same recycling fee as the reg regular homeowners, right? And it would also allow them to take advantage of the other programs. Exactly. That they currently don't and can't. So that, that is a new revenue source. And, and that's what I said. We need to find out how much more revenue that would, what, that would support. Okay. So, from the, 
so the, the question would be how many of those, yeah, come back. The question becomes now how many parcels are zoned S3 that are now escaping or that would escape this and, and fee? And by that, unit, yeah. Yeah, by unit. <clears throat> so how much, and is there any way the that you The last time I did look at it, um, don't quote me on the exact number, but what? it was around like 12,000 somewhat units. But that's like, you know, overall units for the 12, entire 12,000 units? Is that units. And so... When I was doing research on different cities and how they do it, ultimately a lot of the programs were run the same where they would charge the actual owner, the landlord, for the total units within that building, and then they would offset the cost by charging so the resident $3 a month or $4 I hope I'm not taking us into different waters, Mayor, but if, if we have 12,000 units... It's not would, the exact number, don't quote well, me, but yeah. <laughs> is that, so there's 12,000 units... How would you do the math to find out what the revenue that we could recover from for it's those people? About one hundred eighty thousand. One hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. yeah. So well, you guys are quick on math. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so so why don't? How come we can't come up with a program where we're charging like Alderman Hanauer said, where we're charging the the, the landowner? the fee for this and then just include them into the program. One of the biggest issues when it came to landlords when I was looking at other cities is that it was the whole turnover rate with tenants that are actually renting property and especially in multifamily buildings. But what I found that a lot of cities do is but that hold they... That, hold, on, hold that thought. But if there's somebody in one of those units mm -hmm. on that property, then they're, we're providing a service to that. The service will be provided to that particular property. So if it's one or if it's... 20, mm -hmm. then they should be a part of this and we should be able to charge them. Right. That was that was the issue with the other cities is that do you, you know, take into account the turnover rate, how difficult that would be for CWLP, our utility that actually deals with that, putting it on those utility bills, or with what I saw with a lot of cities, how they dealt with it, is that it doesn't matter the turnover rate. You're a tenant, you're an owner, you own a building that has 20 units, you get charged for 20 units. You offset that to the cost of your residence. Even if you have some that are empty, eventually it's going to be filled. So that's... That's still something that, again, has to be presented, has to be looked into, and has to be talked with CWLP on how they would do the billing. Thank you. And that's yeah. something we'd have to work through because I would imagine... Uh, Even if it's possible, It'd yeah. be uh, by the property. It wouldn't be by the... You know, but you know, if you have a house, or it's a fourplex or something, but that's you might have a couple of trees. So that's uh, part of the issues we're trying to work through is figuring out the solution. But doesn't that become Alderman Redpath's fund sourcing? Oh, yeah. Fine. I mean, that's part of it. <laughs> you said convince you. We're, we're trying to convince you. Alderman for Alderman. Yep, yeah. for Gen Z. Um, a lot of these people pay their own utilities. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't that already be on their, their bill? Unfortunately, no, because they still fall in that. So there's like this whole coding system that CWLP has that actually merges with Public Works, and so we identify that as this unit, and it has like basically a no in the system. So they're not charged that waste and recycling three dollar fee, but they do ultimately pay their CWLP water and electric bill. Sounds like a lot of work. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a whole. That's for sure. Is Arlene? Uh, Flurry here, or there's. I think she wanted to speak to the uh, yard waste and then others. <coughs> My name is Arlene Flurry. I'm president of Vinegar Hill neighborhood, and I live at 445 West Kennedy Street. Um, I'm all in favor of the stickers because I spent a lot more than that on stickers. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that live in my neighborhood, especially on my block, that never clean up their yard waste. And when I was going somewhere, I saw a, a yard cleanup crew that was raking leaves and sweet gum balls down the sewer on uh, West Lawrence, where New Street comes into it. and. Um, I think I called and turned them in. But anyway, I think it's a good idea. I think that um, I, I have a small yard, but my God, every tree in the neighborhood blows in my yard. So for the small amount that I have, sometimes I have five or six bags. So I think it's a good idea. I think the trial date would be good for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wished to address this issue from the audience? 
if you'd state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. My name is Bill Basket. I live at 1301 North 3rd. I'm the president of Lincoln Park Neighborhood Association and a member of the Coalition of Inner City Older Neighborhoods ICON. I am speaking to urge the emergency passage of the amendment to the ordinance 2019-180, which provides free yearly yard waste pickup for the fiscal year 2020-2021. The proposed funding of this ordinance amendment of $1 a month or $12 a year added to the recycling fee is less than five cents per day in order to have nine months of yard waste pickup. For those of us who live in the older neighborhoods, maintaining our yards for curb appeal is a March through November evolution. There is always grass clippings, small branches, and other yard waste along with leaves. With this additional nine month yard waste pickup, it will become much easier and less expensive in the end to accomplish these ongoing tasks. In addition, it will allow those elderly folks who can no longer do their own yard work one less burden to worry about in buying yard waste stickers for the people they hire to do their yard work. This yearly service will provide a set period for when pickup will occur and where to place the yard waste bags. With the current system, depending on what company picks up your garbage depends on where you place your bags. Unbelievably, there is fly dumping of yard waste in the city. I recently picked up 10 yard waste bags in my alley full of pine tree needles. There is not a pine tree in my area. This ordinance should cut down on fly dumping of yard waste bags. I would like to remind those in the audience and watching at home that this is a fee for additional services not a tax increase. Now there will be those who say I do not have yard waste, so why should I have to pay for yard waste pickup? I can say I do not recycle electronics or big item furniture on a yearly basis, so why should I have to pay for that? I can go one step further and say I don't drive my car or walk in that part of the town, so why should I pay for good streets and sidewalks in that neighborhood? I will tell you why because we are all one community. Being part of a community, we all pay taxes and fees for the betterment and well-being for all of us who live in this community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else from the audience? My name's Polly Paskin. I live at 2361 South 7th Street. First of all, I, w I just want to commend us, and particularly all of you as aldermen. This is, I think, one of the best discussions we've had on, a, on an issue facing the city for a long time with this much participation and, and good ideas. Um, Obviously, I'm in, in favor of elimination of the yard stick, uh, the yard waste stickers, um, and I'm in favor of an additional cost to um, our waste and recycling fee on the, the water and the sewer portion of our CWLP bill. Um, I would be very comfortable with a dollar. I think it was wisely raised that you know this may not be enough. Um, sort of long term. And then somebody, I think, wisely raised the notion that, you know, perhaps if we start putting this fee on, you know, units of, of uh, rental at X number, that could be an additional uh, resource. Um, I'm probably not in favor of it being a trial program, only because a trial program would mean we would have to institute some increase to, to begin the program. And I think one of the things about this, I think, make it successful is the systemization of it and the predictability of the every other week that's going to make it work for residents. Um, and I think that if there's additional income to offset, I think what you're saying, Alderman Redpath, like in two years, so if, if, we, if a dollar generated $440,000 per year, but we still might need to offset what could be a cost of maybe it seemed like excess of a million in two years, maybe the cost of, of, um, of the uh, units, the rental units uh, becoming part of the revenue would be, would be useful. So again, I hope tonight we could come to an agreement that we will eliminate um, the yard waste stickers. Um, I hope that it, it amounts to an increase on the waste and recycling fee 
that enables us to be able to see as a city that having a system, having it predictable, um, is what's going to improve um, both the well-being and the morale of the city, but also the look and the appearance of the city and not having an additional cost um, and machinations of juggling budget lines uh, at um, the Department of Public Works. So longer term, past this two-year projection, I think there was an idea for revenue source, maybe going forward, maybe somewhere between 180 or $200,000 that might offset that additional cost. Um, but I think this is a wise idea. I appreciate everyone who brought it forth and has spoken to it, and I hope it's something we can agree on. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the council regarding this matter? Any other discussion by the alderman? I have two alderman points, Mayor. Tyler. My first point that I would like to bring up, and this is something I think would be beneficial and could have been beneficial to the current council, um, Medina, I think that, uh, I don't know if we need to do this in an ordinance form request for later or if it's just something that can be added to the slate, but I think that we really do need a quarterly report to the alderman presentation where we look at this sheet where we talk about your beginning balance, programs that are going on, and, and so on. I think that this, I think it would be very beneficial especially if we increase the, the, the service fee to, to go forward, which is my hope. Mm -hmm. But I think either way, I think a quarterly report from you with these about these programs and about your fund balance, not only would that help the alderman to know what money's still there and where we're going and how the, that last quarter has gone, I think it could be very beneficial overall to the council. You're talking about moving forward? I'm talking about doing like a quarterly report to the council about the waste and recycling fee and the programs that were covered during that last quarter. Is that something that you think you could do? Yes. You, um, what we can do is I can tell Director Curry that you would like to add Fund 49 to the quarterly corporate fund reporting and expand it on programs. Yes. We can discuss that and any other funding. I add think that that's something that that would allow this body to maintain some form of finger on the pulse of what mm -hmm. your fund balance is, right? And they can keep an eye on things so that we're not surprised when leaf pickup goes over. I mean, I can't tell you how many times in the 12 years I've been up here that we've had to do a supplemental of an extra 125,000, another 150,000 right, yeah, for yeah. leaf pickup in spring or fall, right? I think that I think what you're doing here is a great step forward. I think that the comments from the community, both privately to the alderman and publicly tonight, have definitely shown a direction. And I think that a systematic reporting can make sure that there are some checks and balances. No, I agree on that. So I would like to propose, first off, that that be a quarterly report. My second thing I'd like to do is I'd like to propose an amendment to the emergency passage ordinance that provides for a $1.50 increase in the waste and recycling fee effective July 1st, and that we go with the plan for this year for the every two week pickup with no sticker. With all the details that have already been discussed in the, around, I'm sure Mr. Zirkel can pull the amendment together. Do what again? Time Same time period that there was already discussed, where it would run from four. what March to November. Four and four. It's four in the front end, four on the back end, right? So you're changing it to four and six. Well, we got it. So you want to change it to four and four? Is it four and six? Yeah. So it's a ten week, right? Four and six. In a ten every week, two Anita? weeks. Every two weeks it goes to December thirty first. Okay. So it's every two weeks. Mayor, if I can. Yes. Please. Make sure. Just sure. point of clarification. Alderman Donna. It would be every two weeks from April through December. Correct. With no stickers. Correct. So to, to be clear, the, the, your proposal is to eliminate the sticker program. With the exception of January, February, March, if people needed it. Well, then you're not eliminating you the sticker stickers. program. Well, it's I, just to get rid of those stickers well, that people that have already bought. Stickers people have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the obligation is under the trash haulers to pick up on those stickers, correct? Yes. yes. Be an understanding. With a little more enforcement. 
I think there's a lot of things about that garbage ordinance that need addressed, yes. but I think that's not something that we have time to finish with this body before the next one is sworn in. Okay, I'll second your amendment. brings in an extra six. Dollar fifty so would bring in somewhere between six hundred and sixty and six hundred and seventy-five thousand projected. And if when you're getting your quarterly reports, this could allow that if if I'm correct in my guess that you're going to see a decrease in some of these like the leaf pickup costs and the branch pickup costs over time that if you do this program, you guys may be able to reduce the fee down a year from now if it's if your quarterly report is telling you that you don't need it. If not, can we get the park district to pick them up? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where the park district needs to put their bags. <laughs> I second that motion then. So Corporation Council is going to cover real, what we've real quick, Mayor, discussed. Um, real quick, Mayor. Real quick. Okay, so the additional dollar fifty will bring in it. Bring in starting July first. We'll bring in four hundred and forty thousand dollars. Right. Well, projected six sixty over a full year. Right, but for this year it'll be four hundred and forty, and then the following fiscal year it will bring in six hundred and sixty thousand. Correct. So that would cut. That would prevent the the. It'll, it'll keep, keep everything, everything in the black. In the black. It'll, keep the, it'll prevent the deficit. Julie, are you good with this? Mm -hmm. And it should prevent, You're in the theory, only I care about. Not touching yelling. the sewer fund. <laughs> That's all because I'm talking about. Are you convinced, mm -hmm. Alderman Redpath? I, think, I still huh. think that going long term, yeah. this per will prevent having to touch the sewer fund, which we all know the sewers will be the next major problem the city faces. Right. So I support your amendment, Alderman, but I got to say that the, at the beginning of this discussion, you said something about making sure that these were dedicated funds that weren't going to be touched. Is that part of your motion? I think that that's where the hard part on that, and this was part of the discussion, my, my discussion earlier, I said no new programs, and that comes into that quarterly report. So I, how, Corporation Council, how do we do that? Do we add that to the amendment? or? Uh, he wants to allocate it specifically what, what to the I, yard waste program. Would, um, again, rec recommend just briefly is that we take these in uh, proposed amendment number one, if I understood Alderman Tylen, would be to request a quarterly report right. relating to the uh, expenditures and status of the program. Yes. So if Can we, we could take them by All right, by so amendment quarter. number one is to request the quarterly report of the waste and recycling fee fund balance and expenditures. Thanks. Second. Right. Move second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. And Motion carries unanimously. Amendment number two would be to increase the waste and recycling fee by a dollar fifty, effective July 1st, 2019. And to make those funds specifically dedicated toward waste and recycling fee toward yard waste pickup items. With no new programs. Can I say something to that Dedicate. real quick? Sure. So when we're looking at like Evan's contracts and things in the future, there are ways to literally decrease costs with different types of programs, including new type of composting facilities, even facilities that we would take on you know, whether it's the city or it's, you know, organizations in town, there's all kinds of different things that people are coming up with all the time as far as technology. So if that would fall into like a new program, then that's, you know, really kind of gray area. That's why I think saying yard waste dedicated yep. probably covers that. And if you get into that situation, you're just going to have to come back to the council because we have to make sure that these, uh, these funds stay in this fund. We don't want to get into, there's too many times that, and not necessarily you guys, but throughout the whole city that people find, well, we're going to take it out of this fund. We don't, we don't want to do that. This is a tough thing for us to do right here. I mean, we want this to happen. Our constituents Our want constituents it, are going to say it's, it's what they want. Exactly. Our constituents want this to go for leaves, yard waste, branches. This is what they're willing to pay for, so I'm willing to say this is what it needs to be, dedicated toward yard waste funds. Is it like dedicated towards the branch as well? Yeah. So we're so talking about like green goes, waste This dollar general. fifty goes towards the yard waste. Yard waste, branches, leaves, yes. And maybe allocated towards green waste or something like that. Did you get all those lines? Corporation Council. <laughs> Corporation Council, you want to reiterate that amendment of the dollar fifty? Good luck. Good luck. Good luck, Jim. Or do you want me to do it? <laughs> um, <laughs> proposed amendment number two would raise the existing three dollar uh, uh, fee 
to a total of $4.50 beginning July 1st, 2019, provided, however, the additional funds may only be used to uh, fund yard waste related programs. Which includes branches, correct? That yard that waste would, re related, would relate yeah. to yes. branches, of course. No, I want to specify that because there are definitely two programs right now. So include yard waste or branches in the amendment. Or just green waste. Green waste. Green waste. waste. I mean, that's. <laughs> All right. Green waste. What if the branches are dead? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Just a point of clarification. Do we have a second? This is for the yard waste expansion. Uh, I don't want people to get the wrong impression saying that, oh, we're expanding the limb right. pickup. We're right. not doing that. No. Yeah. Right. So really, it's for the. Yard main waste. purpose, primary purpose of yard and waste. And just so people people realize, we said at the beginning of this that a lot of this that used to be funded by the sewer program is no longer being funded by sewer program. This is not new new spending. This is spending that now has to have a way to pay for itself because we're going to need every dime that we've got in that sewer program. You good with this, Nate? Okay. So, any so questions? I'm looking for a uh, second. Is there a okay. second? I'll, second. I'll have, so, any other discussion on Amendment 2? If you'd reiterate that, Corporation Council. Uh, it's my understanding proposed Amendment number 2 would raise the existing $3 rate to a total of $4.50 per month, effective July 1st, 2019, provided, however, the additional funds may be used for green waste only. That's good. Yard waste. Yep. You prefer yard waste both. or green waste? List both. Yard waste slash green waste. Cover it all. That way there it's covered. Any other discussion? All those in favor of Amendment 2 say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Amendment 3 proposed is that we go with the plan of April to December. No sticker program. Every two-week pickup. All the other rules from the previous yard waste pickup apply, such as the bags, the items, where they get placed, etc. Say that again. So can we? They still have to use paper bags. Okay. We're not changing the program. Rules we're changing the pickup. But it, we need to probably reference the old program that we're keeping the same rules, because otherwise it kind of opens it up to the plastic bags and other things that Correct. have caused problems in the past. All right. Now, this does actually include that four-week sweep in the fall as well. So, four-week weekly sweep, sweep of really the actual sweep. That though, or can we it already includes it, and think, the price overall is not going to drop. Um, is it just to comply with the bid? So, the, so the, bid, the, the current bid that we're accepting the includes a four-week weekly right sweep. Okay. Mm -hmm. to wait to after that's All correct, and that's for the 770. Okay. okay. So, so, we have the details down. That's the Turner proposed amendment three. Alderman Turner has a question. Go ahead, Alderman Turner. No, I, I'm, I'm fully, I fully support this program, but I do think that we need to do an education piece along with it, so that we put something out to the public on multiple platforms, with specifically the changes to the program. Um, however, stating that you know the, the bags have to be the same and all of that, because otherwise. There's going to be a lot of confusion. So I would just suggest that we do a full-on education piece around this program. And I think we probably ought to also ought to post something to the places that are currently selling the stickers so that they have it there that the stickers are no longer needed so the employees know and they can tell the customers. Just to if I can, a point of clarification, Mayor. Alderman Donna. What uh, people have obviously purchased stickers already, will those would be used during the months that this program is not in effect. Is that correct? Correct. And we would have to actually, you know, talk to all of the waste haulers about that through <laughs> March through, wait, January. January to March. January, January to March. February to March, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, if there's a bunch of snow, we got like 10 and a half some odd inches right. and stuff, well, right? We'll They're not going to be picking up the yard waste bags, but given the... You know, temperatures and the climate and things like that, they can reuse the stickers. And if we have any pushback or what have you from the waste haulers, we can also come up with some other ways to reuse those stickers where people aren't actually in a loss. Sounds good. So there's proposed amendment three. Second. So, uh, Corporation Council, you want to tackle that one? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I am referring to the uh, detail that the council had received at the committee. This was yeah. for the bid. Uh, yes, yes. The RFP. And uh, it refers to the overall cost to be amended to $770,440. And the services provided references full contracted service for eight month period, every other week curbside collection plus full four week citywide sweep. Correct. Yes. That's what was passed out at the committee meeting. Right. Correct. Okay. Point of clarification, that was eight months? It's a eight nine months month program. Every other. And one month of weekly. And one month of weekly for a total of nine months. Okay. Yeah. Alderman Hanauer, or I'm sorry, Herman Senor. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't like me, Mayor, but. <laughs> Jeez. I, you know, that was kind of really. <laughs> but anyway, um, Julie, could you do an analysis sheet for us with the additional cost increases and what, what it would look like? Can you get that out to us by tomorrow, please? I was just talking with council coordinator. I said I needed to update everything and make sure we get it out to all of you tomorrow. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. A lot better than Bill. You ought to be here every meeting. <laughs> you're you're going to be on a bad side now. Yes, but only for a few more weeks. Any other discussion on the amendment? There was an amendment. Was there a Three. second? Three. Second. Three. Second. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of Amendment 3, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries unanimously. So is there any other discussion on the ordinance as amended? Yes. Alderman, so Rep. Path. now the hard work starts. The hard work starts because we need to figure out how we're going to incorporate those S, what is the S3s next level, S, the S3 right. into this program. And then we also need to go through and, and look at the programs that we have that we can eliminate, like, like the bulky, if the bulky is not an affordable program or something like that, you need to look at all those programs so we can see where we can incorporate that. By doing this, this should help us in our sewer problems too. And don't you agree, Nate, that a lot of the problems that we have with our sewers could go away if we start getting this stuff picked up on a regular basis? I don't know if it'll go away, but uh, well, yes, it will definitely help out. But it's got to um, help. It'll definitely help out uh, cleaning inlets, um, so debris into our detention ponds. So that's a potential revenue increase for us because we need to keep this, if we're going to keep this sustainable, okay? That's what I want you to look into, all right? Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, as part of the thing when you're looking at that S3 issue, you might find that breaking it down to where first off you're looking at the residential properties that are like a, that were once a single family house that have been broken into a fourplex. Right. Those should be easier to, to bring in first than trying to do an apartment complex. I think that anything that's a single that used to be a single family residency, even if it's got six apartments in it because it's an old big old house, that's still got a yard, that's still got a driveway, that's still got everything that a the house next door that's got one person in it has got. And those people should be in the program right. anyway. Yeah, we'll have to come back with a separate ordinance on that. That would Right. We can't do that tonight. Right. Any other discussion? So all those in favor of the ordinance as amended, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. Alderman Turner, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance passes as amended, 10 voting yes, none voting no. Mayor, you Thank you very much. weigh in. It's emergency passage. Uh-oh. I'll vote yes. So uh, I think that wraps up our Ooh. agenda items. Is there any other new or unfinished business come before the council? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still on branches. Uh, I've got an email here from a constituent. Um, trying to figure out, Nate, I included you on the email earlier today. We're trying to figure out when we're talking about northwest versus southwest and northeast versus southeast, do we have those dividing lines? Because I've got several constituents who are trying to understand whether they should have been picked up last week or if they're part of what's coming. Because I, at one point in time, West Washington was the cutoff. 
Right, and we'll get you the map, and it's also on the website. Right. And if um, it turns out that this neighborhood got missed, we'll just take care of yeah, it. Yeah, let us know, and Adina has a list, and then okay. she'll contact and make sure they're picked up. Uh, I believe uh, we just wrapped up the Northwest last week, and uh, now we're in the Southwest quadrant. And then uh, we should be wrapped up by Thursday, and then we'll move over to the Southeast quadrant. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. How about Hilltop Road? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Any other unfinished business? Is there, uh, I know uh, Daryl Riffey uh, reminded me that Junior Blues will play Friday at the Nelson Center. It's a playoff game at 7 o'clock, so uh, we appreciate everybody coming out and supporting the Junior Blues. Herm, yeah, we will have that in a set. Alderman Senor. Yeah, um, I'd like for Mr. Hahn, Mr. Dow to come up to the, to the oh, podium. Director Dahl? Director Dahl, yeah. We were in... Um, we had the pleasure of being in Southampton, England this past weekend, and uh, we were walking downtown, and there was a, uh, I guess you want to call it a advertisement saying, Historic Route 66, uh, 7th October 2019, you get 16 nights of self-drive with hotels, and you can fly from London for 1,679 pounds, and that equates to like $2,190 for 16-day stay, airline ticket and a drive through scenic Route 66. So the uh, advertisements for your Route 66 are very well accepted overseas, and hopefully we can expand on that, or you guys can expand on that and take advantage of that program in the hopefully near future. We're one of the absolutely. Stops. Hey, thank you for recognizing that, Olivia Monsignor. Um, absolutely. UK, Germany, two big markets for us on Route 66 and on the international side. So thank you for recognizing that. I just that. wanted to let you know it's out there, and they are advertising Route 66. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Or unfinished business? business yeah, we'll have people come up. Okay, yep. You. Any new business before the council from the city council members? All the women dissent up. Um, we had an incident in Ward 6 yesterday at approximately 11.42 a.m. And um, I don't want to dwell on it. It was all over the news. And I think that War Harvard Park is doing everything right. There's a neighborhood, neighborhood watch program over there that's extremely active. There is a uh, neighborhood association, the president's sitting right there, that's extremely active. And we're still having these incidents on a Monday morning at 11.42 in the morning. Um, and this is no, this isn't negative about the Springfield Police Department, but something has to be done when an incident happens in our wards, that we're notified of it, that we're made aware of it before we find out about it on social media, on the news. Um, it's, it's an ongoing problem. And, you know, we know our neighborhood police officers don't work regular shifts and don't work regular hours. Uh, but I think we should get a phone call when 13 shots are fired at 11.42 on a Monday morning. I, that's just my feeling. And, uh, you know, this it originated in Ward 2 and it traveled into Ward 6. And something's got to give here, people. We've been talking about this, you know, for a couple of years now. And, we, you know, I know we've got new technology coming and I applaud the security registration, camera reg re registration program. Um, but this is unacceptable. And that's not, you know, again, that's not on the, the Springfield Police Department. That is just to the community in general. We cannot continue this sort of behavior. Thank you. We'll have the chief respond to the Alderman through email or if you want to come up now, whichever you prefer as far as protocol with regards to that. I agree with the Alderman. Anytime we have shootings in our community, it's a tragic situation. Fortunately, nobody was hurt in the incident. No. Uh, with that said, our first and foremost priority is taking care of business. Not calling Alderman, not calling you as the mayor. Our job is to figure out what happened and work through it. And uh, 
give them an email afterwards is not an issue. There's a time and a place where we may not email you because of certain information you're not entitled to, and we're not going to get into that. So with that, we can share certain information about what happened, uh, et cetera, and we'll try to get something out to you. But it may not be as timely as people want, you know, especially when it's in the middle of the night and it happens over the middle of the night. I don't expect my people to wake me up in the middle of the night unless it's something life-threatening. I read about it the next morning just like you do. So, and then I go in and I ask questions about what happened, et cetera. But to start emailing every alderman in the middle of the night when there's an incident in your neighborhood or your ward isn't something that's practical for my officers. And we're not, I'm not asking for that. Okay. Um, and I'm not even, there, there, there just has to be some sort of improved communication. Because when I'm hearing it from, um, you know, people that were nearby or I'm getting calls, you know, what happened? I found that, you know, my phone rang off the hook yesterday. I have a full-time job. I can't, I can't take those calls, um, especially when I don't have the facts because the people on the scene said it was 13 shots and the news reported it was four shots. And again, those are, there's certain information we're not going to put out to the media. We're not going to put out to everybody else when there's an investigation that's going on. So and, that's and the problem I, with social media is that people want to get on there and put stuff that's not factual on there and it leads to the other issues. If any alderman has an issue, pick up the phone and call me. I'll be more than happy to talk to you and get the information. Meetings that I was in, I didn't find out about the incident yesterday until three o'clock. So really? when I came out of my meetings and my, my daily duties, I was updated as to what happened. So with that, you know, I'm more than happy to share that information with you, but it may not be as timely as you wish it to be. Yeah, that's for uh, any item. If it's power outage, call uh, Director Brown. I mean, I that's people call me, that's what I do. If I don't know, or the chief or, so don't hesitate to call no. what other, whenever the time of day or night it is. Pick, I, the phone sits beside my bed all night long. Pick it up, call me if you have a concern, and I will take the time to find out what you need to know and share what I can share with you. Uh, again, though, sometimes certain people want things that I can't share. And I, I, just can't do I understand, and we've been in that situation before where certain people wanted information, and I said, I can't tell you that. Right. So. Uh, do you want to uh, say anything about focus deterrence, or you want to wait till you give the full report on that. We'll do a full report on of, focus uh, deterrence here in the next few months, or next month or so. Uh, all the aldermen were invited to our next call-in, so uh, I've heard from one alderman, I haven't heard from anybody else yet. So you should have gotten an email on that. Uh, yeah. You should have gotten an email. So again, if, you'll, if you're interested, it's not a public forum, it's not open to the public, please respond back and I'll get you added to the admission list. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other new business from the alderman? Uh, individuals that signed up to speak. One was uh, Barbara Anderson. Is Barbara Anderson here? Hello, my name is Barbara Anderson, and I live at 155 Cypress Point Drive. And after listening to all the talk about leaves and gumballs and clogged sewers, I feel kind of like a poor relative because I'm here to talk about protecting our trees. I've lived here for right around 15 years. And in that length of time, I have seen probably between 30 and 40 big, huge trees cut down in my area. I'm not talking about gumball trees, and I'm not talking about ash trees. I'm talking about big maples and big oaks. And it just makes me sick. The last time was about a month ago. And this guy cut down the most beautiful big oak tree. He said he wanted better grass. Well, it really ticked me off, and that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Before I lived here, I lived in Lake County, which is about halfway between Chicago and Milwaukee, right on Lake Michigan. And in Lake County, there's a small city called Lake Forest. I don't know if any of you know it. A lot of celebrities live there. Anyhow, they're very, very proud of their trees. Well, Mr. T bought, a, bought an estate there, and the first thing he did was cut down 16 big oak trees. Mm. So the people in Lake Forest were so incensed, they passed an ordinance to protect their trees. Well, when I see all the trees getting cut down here, I think of Lake, County's, or Lake Forest ordinance. So I called and I got a copy, 
And I wish you guys would start protecting our trees. I mean, I understand you have a list of permissible trees, and I didn't know that until I was here last month. I have yet to find anybody that knows you have a list of permissible trees. I planted a cypress, and I'm probably going to have to cut it down. I thought Cypress Point Drive should have a cypress. You know, why else would it have that name? But have any of you read the latest issue of Illinois Times? There's an article here, I Love Trees, and it talks about the shortage of trees in Springfield, how the city's kind of fallen down on the job. And according to, well, I don't have my glasses on. According to this survey they did, or this, uh, they determined that Springfield only has 24% of our city shaded by trees. And they said Cook County outdoes us because they have 29%. So we have a long way to go. Now I'm not talking about not cutting down the gumballs. I'm not talking about cutting down the ash. I've got one that's dead and dying now. And I'm not talking about cutting down the fir trees that's got that fungus. But if we start letting people just cut down anything, it's gonna be terrible in this town. Our street's gonna be bad enough once they get rid of all the gumball trees and my big ash and my cypress. <laughs> but I would appreciate it if you would look at this ordinance. It, I can't see it costing anybody anything. I can't see how it would bother anything. And yeah, it's telling people what they can do with their property. But you already tell people what they can do with their property. You won't let me have a rooster. You know, you won't let me put up electric fence to keep out my neighbor's cat. <laughs> so there's all kinds of things that you tell us what we can and can't do with our property. Can you read me that, that ordinance number? No, just read it, read it to me. Uh, she brought not, copies for everybody. The no, the number. It's there's a number here. on ours. It's not ours. I know it's not ours, but I wanted to do the research uh, on it from the city. Look, she has a copy for everybody. We really I appreciate you bringing I that. I sent you a, mayor, a, a copy, Mayor, but it was just for the election, so I don't know if you ever had a chance to look at it. Know that we are taking a look at the uh, whole uh, policy or the ordinance with regards to the tree commission and that, and trying to intertwine it with the Springfield Green program. But trees are an important initiative with regards to that. So I appreciate you bringing this ordinance forward, and we will definitely take a look at it. it and it's reasonable. Mm -hmm. It's as if you, you can't cut down one that has a diameter of more than eight inches, and if you do, you have to plant two that have a diameter each of four inches. It's common sense stuff. Alderman but, Redpath knows all about that, don't you, Alderman Redpath? <laughs> I got a big ash tree too. <laughs> but, On the lake properties. But this is Springfield is the home of Lincoln. It should like a, look like it has a little history. It should have a little dignity and a little beauty. But if you look around, you see mostly cement, and I think it's a, a shame. So I'd appreciate you really thinking about this and help us save our trees. Thank you. Sure will. Thank you. Ordinance, ma'am. Ma'am, here's your ordinance. Thank I think you. these are copies for the Those group. are copies. Them right. Pass them around, please. please. Uh, Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Then uh, Doug Schnell, I don't know if he's still here. I think he's going to speak on a zoning matter. Yeah, he's coming. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, uh, Daryl Harrell? No. Daryl Harrell? Joanne Conrad. I'm glad I'm going after the tree lady. <laughs> Joanne Conrad, 13 Red Oak Lane, Springfield, of course. I came to ask two quick questions. <clears throat> I'm not going to run out my time. I had a chance to look at the Archer Call Purchase contract. Um, my question is one, are we given Arch? Is it Archer or Arch? Arch. Arch, are we giving them electricity? And if we are, how are we getting a break on the coal? And what are the plans in that direction? And the other question is, I've been here before on this issue. I live in Timberlane, and I'm under the coal ash when it blows behind me on the trucks and stuff like that. So I know California and 19 or more countries by now are going waste-free. That means green stuff too. 
and they're going uh, carbon neutral or carbon free by 2050. California's a huge state. Um, what are our plans in Springfield to go carbon neutral, carbon free? Thank you for your time, and I'm going to sit down to listen to you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we have an integrative resource plan that uh, is coming forward, so uh, that'll be part of that discussion is the proper balance of coal with renewable energy. That meeting is scheduled Rippet. for May 6th that we're going to have our next utility meeting, Mayor. May 6th? Yes, sir. And will be the next utilities meeting at 530? Yes, sir. Correct? And, Mayor, I don't think that we're, we're, I don't know if we provide, we don't give free electricity to anybody that I'm aware of. It's in your contract. Correct. I don't think it's uh, coal. We don't give we don't give them free. Corporation like Council, you'd like to yeah, weigh in on that? The, yeah, there's some up, there's no provision that. It the well, it might be in the contract, ma'am, but it's. The, it, well, it, what's the plan? Why was that put in? The only thing that was in there for was basically to give us an opportunity if we wanted to provide them power in the future, but that would be at a cost. It would not be for free. Um, but we've had no discussions at all with regard to providing them power, though, since then. So. Yeah. We're already paying for the coal. Why didn't we bring electricity? We're not, ma'am. Okay. Have that in the Is uh, Deborah Kunkel? So, did you say there was a plan? Uh, that's something the IRP will help us uh, map out the correct uh, plan of action as we move forward. No plan. We're getting there. Deborah, if you'd uh, state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. My name's Deborah Kunkel, and my address is 1625 West Edward Street. Thank you. And um, I'm here for the same reason. It's about the um, Arch Coal contract. And there's just some, um, a couple of things in there in, in one date. I'm not going to be very long. It, it's running really late tonight. But there is a date coming up in this contract that I wanted to make sure of. Um, first of all, um, the first page of the contract that says that there will be no more price return redeterminations and arbitration, they've been eliminated from the contract. And I think that that's not a good idea. And I think that we're already financially vulnerable in our city. And that um, I don't know if the council has the plans to put arbitration and redetermination back into uh, whenever there's a new contract made. Um, I understand this contract goes through December of 2020, but on um, Article 17, good faith, and I'll just read it, subject to 17 below. From December 1st, 2018 through and including May 1st, 2019, and that's why I'm here because that's coming up in two weeks. The parties shall negotiate in good faith for a 10-year extension of this contract on new terms and conditions acceptable to the city. If an extension is not approved by the parties' respective boards, and I, I'm assuming that means the council, right? Right. Um, by July 1st, 2019, the city may solicit bids, et cetera. So I was wondering about this uh, May 1st. Um, it's not a deadline per se, but we are, I want to make sure that we're not planning on extending this for 10 years at this point. And um, so I would like to know if we can safely say we are not. And also that um, the city will let the constituents know when there's new um, contract pending. So we can, we can be assured that there is arbitration put in the contract and there is redetermination in the contract because that's only safe for us. We can't, we can't, um, it, it's always been there and I think it should always be there in the future. So I was just here to address that and to ask those two questions. Thanks. Appropriation Council, you care to address those issues? It's my understanding that there's no, um, at this point, no uh, determination to sign any type of contract. I think we're still in that the, process. You may recall that the agreement, uh, uh, the five-year agreement will be coming up, I believe it is December of 2020 or uh, January of 2021. And there's a provision that requires or provides that the parties may get together and discuss potential extension. However, any such extension would be have to be a matter of voting on from, you know, by the city council. 
the issue of the uh, arbitration uh, question, there is no uh, redetermination provision or arbitration provision in the uh, current contract because it's a fixed price contract with no increases through the term of the contract. Uh, Future-wise, that'll have to be something that the council will have to consider, but it's a very complex business point. Uh, in the past, the uh, arbitration provisions uh, and the uh, process involved with that worked at a competitive disadvantage for the city. And I think that was very seriously discussed, you know, during the last uh, go around. But any changes to the contract uh, will be something that will come forward through the city council, fully vetted, fully discussed, and voted on. So it's safe to say that uh, the contract won't be coming before this city council, it'll be the next city council? Uh, oh, yes, no, that is correct. It'll be sometime, Manhattan. maybe next year. And, Can you come up to the mic? Yeah. Are you going, you know, ma'am, you need to come up to the mic if you, I mean, you were up. Mm -hmm. um, for the people at home, please come up to the mic. The, right. Alderman Hanar. Uh, Jim, do, is this a, and this is a negotiation to up to up to 10 years. It doesn't have to be. Right. We're not going to throw out a 10-year contract. Right. This is an up to it can be up to 10 years. And you're right, we did have a long discussion about the fact that uh, it, I believe in the old contracts, um, the, the city, if, the, if, the, if the, um, the cost was detrimental to the city, we could not get out of it. But if, it, if the cost was detrimental to the, uh, the coal company. supplier, they could get, they could do a force majeure, I don't know the legal term, but, and they could literally come in and say they have to renegotiate. That's what we took out, is what I recall. Is that, is that correct, Jim? Uh, Something to that effect? No. I was going to say, in, in, um, in broad terms, the difference between the prior contract and this contract are two primary points. One is, uh, keep in mind, it was a fixed price contract for five years with no adjustments. In the past, there had been a potential of annual or periodic adjustments. Right. Um, if the parties, for whatever reason, would make a determination uh, that they couldn't agree on a price on these three-year increments, then it would go to potentially arbitration. Then there's a lockout period for two years following that, which in effect prevented the city from seeking RFPs. You may recall that became a, a very serious point of contention right. at the last go-around where the other proposer claimed an advantage to the price in that lockout period right. and caused a considerable amount of uh, uh, disinformation, I would say, uh, involving how that process worked because the city could never accept a lower price right. during that two-year period. So uh, as a practical matter, the current contract protects the city in that it is a fixed price uh, contract with no possibility of increases. It does require the parties to discuss potential extensions. However, it must be agreed on by both parties. So there's no mandatory period. It could be lesser. In theory, it could be more. But it's all something that would be subject to city council approval. And the rest of the contract terms, such as price or other considerations, are, would be something that could be addressed at that time. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I was just saying it, it's not always an advantage that it's a fixed price because it's it's a higher price. Um, it also can't be lowered if it's fixed. That's what I wanted to say. And also, um, there's a provision in here that says if they do not remove the coal ash, um, that, um, that we can renegotiate the contract as well. So um, I don't know if that's in their plans right now or, or in the near future, we would probably like to know that too, so thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address the council? Mayor, at the request of Council Coordinator Griffin, uh, he, he wanted to make sure, and I appreciate this, he wanted to make sure that last week we discussed uh, making some changes to the July calendar and mm -hmm. did all that work out so that those changes were okay, Corporation Council? Uh, yes, there is an ordinance on first reading to make those changes, so we are uh, uh, pursuing that per the direction of the council.
quick, real positive. Um, Michael Higgins. Michael Higgins, 1808 Down Court. Um, I want to thank City Council, Mark Mahoney, for getting this project going, the City Council for their vote tonight. And I want to thank uh, Alderman Hanauer and Alder Red, Alderman Redpath for directing Public Works to look into multi, uh, landlords of multiple units because I, as a citizen, single unit person, has to pay these services. These services should be paid by everyone that uses our cities. So thank you for your interest in that. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the council? Um, You'd state your name and address for the Angel council. Angel Sides, 2124 Black Hawk Road. Um, I uh, was here, um, I have concern about the uh, renegotiation of the, the coal rate. Um, in the past, we've overpaid, um, including uh, $45 per ton when the national rate was 33.72, and I'm not sure uh, why that was, uh, but um, we yeah, have. It's a contract we inherited. Do you recall, Corporation Council? Um, the, I do recall it was something in the range of $45, but the uh, that was a, that was the pre-existing contract that was uh, superseded by the new contract. Correct. But why were we paying that much to that's begin that's with? I mean, that was the, uh, that, that was the so yeah. If you'd uh, address your comments to the chair, that'd be great. Yeah, I agree. Um, we need Thank to you. turn to alternative energy. But um, as far as the new rate, um, is there any way the time period could lapse where we're renegotiating with the same company that overcharged us? And we have a split contract with Archer Coal and Foresight Coal. So they're um, competing for our business and we're having a more competitive rate uh, for the residents of Springfield. I mean, well, if we uh, could do that, we would definitely do that, especially with the wind contracts. Wind contracts the city got upside down on, and uh, we got locked into a contract. I think it, at the time was about the same price, I think, $45, and then the price dropped to $25, so we were reversed in the contract. We tried to get out of it. Unfortunately, once you sign a contract, and again, this was previous city council that locked this council into those uh, negotiations, and uh, so you have to abide by your contracts. So those went off in, uh, I think it was December of this past year, yes. coal contracts coming up, and this council took the appropriate steps in approving that contract, which saved millions of dollars to our ratepayers, and that's what About we intend to do as we move forward. 60, wasn't it? $65 and save. So again, off, off we are going to address what's the proper balance we, with regards to renewables and taking our older units off uh, with that integrated resource plan. So I'd encourage everybody to come to the May 6th. I mean, we weren't uh, really saving. Utilities meeting at 530. We were saving because we were overcharged and then, I mean, we were not really saving. We're just, we were overcharged to begin with. That but, was a no uh, contract. The one that we just that you're speaking to today that's expiring, uh, that's the one that we've saved millions of dollars on. That's the one this council took action on. But Foresight Coal started us out at 31.55, and we Foresight were, couldn't do anything in those first two I, years. We were yeah, in a lockdown period. Out, if um, you would. Here's the deal: the first two years that they had 31 dollars a ton, we couldn't buy it if we wanted to. They could have put a dollar down a ton, a dollar a ton. And we, because of our contract, we have a two year out clause, meaning we cannot buy from anyone but our current supplier, okay? This, this has gone on and everybody talks about this and it was a ploy. It was a simple ploy to try to get us to, to jump in on that. And all it was was a trick. It gets the people who look at the papers. And, and, and what it would have done rules. for us, what it would have done for us at the time, is we were paying 45 plus a ton. Um, we negotiated at the time down to about 39 or 38 mm -hmm. uh, while we were going through the the contract negotiations. What that would have done is for two years we would have been paying 45 plus for two years. We couldn't have, we, the $31 a ton was a fantasy. We never could have gotten there. Now, had Forsyth said, 
from the day this contract takes place, where we start giving coal to you guys, we could do it for 31. I guarantee you it'd be a 10, 10 nothing vote, right. but they didn't do that. They tried, they played tricks. They played dirty tricks is what it was. But with regards to that, would that contract settle uh, what we're looking forward to as the future? And what's the proper balance with coal and renewables? So I'd encourage everybody to come well, May 6th and, and I, listen to resident, the I'm, Energy Authority with regards and to that I report. I just have one more question. Um, when, when the coal industry contributes to, to your chair, campaign, please. when mm. the coal industry contributes to your campaign, the law? Did they break the law? I Excuse love how everybody loves to me. I didn't him. answer my no, question. No, you don't get to address oh any my council gosh. members. Can I Direct ask your my question, comments please? To the chair so we As can a resident order. of this city, what I want to know is what do they get out of that in return? When they give you money, why? Is that for out of the goodness of their heart? I mean, why are they giving you money? I don't Mayor. care how small of amount it is. Why are they giving you money? Well, this comes up we'll over have an over open over discussion again. with the uh, new contract as this one expires. So I encourage everybody to come and make comments at that I point in time. I just don't understand the concept. It's a direct conflict of interest. Take it up with your U.S. Senator. No one is I breaking any campaign laws oh, here I whatsoever. Have. I've gone to protest getting big money out of politics, well, and it's a lot bigger than this on a federal level. And it's not just big money. You have people who make individual America. contributions. Does that person get, then get, make sure you get, they get their sidewalk done first or their street done first? That's the same kind of influence you're talking about, but you guys keep going after corporate or union or whatever else. Can it's we all a bunch see of the foresight contract? Can we see it? Uh, it's a matter of public record, I'm sure. So, no. It's probably out there on the clerk's website, I would think, if someone requested a FOIA. Also and again, that, that was, uh, how long ago was that, Corporation Council? Two and a half years ago. Mayor, three years Mayor ago. just another point of clarification on that contract. If you recall, Forsyth, the one, one of the requirements was that the ash had to be hauled back. Right. Mm -hmm. Forsyth did not have, if you recall, did not have a license site to store ash. Right. Arch did. So... There was, a, there was a whole bunch of, of mandatory Trans requirements in the contract. But again, as we move that, forward, if uh, feel free will, to come and to uh, weigh in at that point we, in time, because that will be we, coming up, as you pointed we would out, like, aptly We're just requesting that the residents of Springfield have a say in Most what our rate is, do. instead of all this just being done. There, it's poorly we, advertised when you... We vetted it uh, two and a half, three years ago, so I encourage you to come when it's up for discussion again. Well... The so date is May 1st. That's that's the renegotiation date for when the item after comes 2020. before the council. That'd be the time to weigh in. But nothing. Pardon. Coming. When would be the time to weigh in? When it comes before the city council. Ordinance. So actually, if you want to come May 6th, 5:30. That's next utilities meeting. That's ideal time to uh, come and hear what the energy authority has to say with regards to the integrated resource plan. Is there anybody else wish to address the council? Is there a motion for adjournment? Uh, adjournment. <laughs> Second, Mr. Mayor, oh. I've got a more safer topic. Alderman McMenamin. Um, there's You've no meeting tonight. next week. Um, <laughs> uh, the next meeting will be two weeks from tonight. Um, this is a five Tuesday month, so don't come here next Tuesday night. There's no meeting. Uh, the next meeting will be April 30th. April 30th, correct. Committee of the whole. Committee is whole on April 30th. Thank you. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. We are adjourned. Thank you.